today we'll be talking about this fellow here. It's a Jizai o kimono uh, by Munekazu, Japanese of course. And uh, we'll be explaining a little bit uh, what a Jizai o kimono actually is. Uh, there's many Jizai o kimonos around, many, many big ones, many early ones, um, but there's no other skeleton like this one. It's a one-of-a-kind museum piece and we very much hope, of course, that we can go into a major collection uh, where there is already a large number of Chizai Okimonos, where it could be the centerpiece. First, um, one has to understand that um, iron, uh, the material of which this uh, sculpture is made, um, uh, was of course the predominant material used by uh, swordsmiths of uh, Japan uh, in the samurai tradition uh, for many, many hundred years before this piece was actually created in the late Edo or early Meiji period, meaning in the mid-19th century. When the samurai tradition uh, was literally uh, eroded and essentially then uh, forbidden in the, uh, during the Meiji period, uh, the swordsmiths had uh, increasingly uh, to look for, for new uh, topics, uh, for new uh, subjects they could work. And uh, that was the beginning of the Jizai o kimono, which is also made of iron. And Jizai o kimono means, it's uh, literally translated, it means um, uh, a, a sculpture which can be uh, put in every possible position. Yeah? Uh, a free decorative object would be more or less the literal translation. Uh, so this skeleton here is made of uh, more than uh, 100 parts, uh, significantly more than 100 parts. Just every feet is already, uh, every foot is already more than 20 parts, as you can see here. And um, it can be put uh, in as many positions as you want. You can uh, remove it here uh, from the base and you can actually seat it yeah, like this, uh, where it's very comfortable position and it can have uh, the hands uh, like this in this position or it can have one hand raised and, and touch his face, the head can be turned. The tradition was started in the 18th century uh, by the Miochin family, uh, and um, they were uh, noted swordsmiths, uh, uh, not only a family but also a school. The uh, uh, Miochin family started to create very simple objects, uh, Christosians uh, and uh, dragons and uh, uh, dragonfish, dragon carps, and all kinds of mythical animals. Now, to create a skeleton like this fellow here um, is an enormous challenge. So it's in an exact scale of one to four, and it's a near accurate depiction of uh, the human body. We have all uh, here the little bones in the feet and in the hand, which are accurately uh, depicted. Um, we have I'll turn this around now carefully. We have the spine, you can see here, with every single spine bone depicted separately. We have the head, uh, the skull, and the teeth modeled separately. And we have here, of course, the jaw that is opening, and this is revealing a absolutely accurate interior of the skull. Most likely, this is the only existing example. Now, it was created and signed by Tomiki Isuke I, his art name much better known, Munekazu. Uh, he lived from 1853 to 1894, so he, was, uh, he died uh, very young, only 41 years old. He was known as quite the eccentric artist. Uh, he did some snakes, which puts him in the tra uh, tradition of the Miyajin school, but he also did uh, this skeleton, uh, which is absolutely unique. It's signed here uh, in the tradition of Munekazu with an inlaid silver plaque. He was also uh, known to have uh, tutored uh, Takase 
Kozan, another notable artist, and even more important, uh, Tanaka Tarayoshi, whose art name was Muneyoshi, and who lived until 1958. He was a very important um, um, Jizai artist, and he made uh, this one here, uh, this snake here, which sold for $250,000. Yeah. Uh, another example, uh, for a piece uh, that uh, has an extremely high level of accuracy and does exist in real life is this amazing piece here. Uh, it's a falcon uh, and a very big one um, like this. Uh, not as big as the skeleton but close. Um, which was sold for 6.7 million Hong Kong dollars in 2018. That's roughly eight, 900,000 euros in today's money. And that was by Itao Shinjiro, uh, another artist who uh, lived from 1842 to 1911. So he lived at this, literally the same time as Monekazu and also tried to go different paths than the traditional Miochin school by creating uh, by taking the challenge of uh, creating an artwork that is um, uh, not only unique, but also exists in the real world. Uh, now we know that major artists have painted skeletons all the time uh, during the history of man mankind. Yeah? Um, one example would be Da Vinci, of course, the most, most important artist that ever lived. The concept it's very old, it's called Memento Mori, which is Latin, and uh, if you translate it literally, it means uh, uh, remember dying. Uh, and it's important to understand that uh, through the conquest uh, of Alexander um, and the establishment of the Silk, Silk Road in the centuries thereafter, uh, the concepts, the military concepts of tactics, strategy, and warfare in general, translated all the way down the Silk Road through China and eventually into Japan. And from there, forging what we know today as the tradition of samurai, where the Memento Mori concept is known to have played a major role. And it was important, uh, specifically for the samurai, not to be scared by death, but to understand death as an essential part of their practice their strategy, their thinking, and most important, their culture. And for this reason, it was important for Munikazu uh, to create a skeleton that ha doesn't have a menacing, uh, let alone threatening look, but more a calm and uh, realistic uh, look that you would um, allocate more to a companion, to a comrade. And uh, this is what makes this piece uh, so special. Another very known uh, feature of this concept uh, or um, angle of this concept is the Chitipati. It's a, an essential part uh, of the Tibetan death culture which shows dancing skeletons uh, also many times in a humorous funny way, uh, a way that uh, was developed by uh, uh, Tibetan monks to understand that death is not something to be afraid of. And we'll close this with uh, a few uh, Japanese pictures of skeletons, because there are some that can also be compared. One uh, that is really good is by Kawanabe Kiyosai, uh, the dancing skeletons, uh, which I think is in the British Museum, yes. Uh, another humorous approach to depict uh, a skeleton I am very sure that Munikazu uh, studied this work by Kavanavi Kiyosai before he actually created his version of the skeleton. Another good study, study object uh, would be uh, this uh, very famous woodblock print by Kuniyoshi. It's a triptych, as you can say. Also, the depiction of skeletons is actually um, uh, Mitsukuni, who is defying the skeleton specter. Um, and uh, yes, of course, uh, here the skeleton in a bit menacing variation, unlike this piece, but it really shows how close actually menace and companionship can be if an artist works the character of an actually static item. That is not the case here, 
because we know uh, we can put this in any position we want, and that is the, the essential cleverness of this piece.